another special book week bedtime story. Hello everyone. So, this week it's South Hill School's book week and tonight's bedtime story is going to be read to you by Mr Mason. That's me. Uh, what I've chosen for you today is a book called Little Wise Wolf. I've chosen it for two reasons. Reason number one is because it's in the school library. So if you fancy going to read it yourself after hearing about it this evening, then it's there for you to do that. And the second one is because it's a wolf who thinks he can get away with not having many friends, but he realises as he goes through the story that friends are really important. And that's something you know I think about at school, and I talk to you about a lot, about how we have to look after our friends and how they're really important. So, let's get going with Little Wise Wolf. Far away on the other side of the mountains, there lived a little wolf. He read big books. He discovered new stars. He knew every herb. He knew everything. Because he knew so much, almost everyone called him Little Wise Wolf. And that made him feel rather proud. The animals who lived nearby often went to see him with difficult questions. Little wise wolf, called the bear, what do butterflies eat? Little wise wolf, where does the rain come from? asked the goat. Little wise wolf, how many stars are in the sky? barked the badger. Wise wolf, I can't read, squeaked a small rabbit. Will you help me? But Little Wise Wolf did not want to be disturbed. He still had so many big books to read, so that he could become even wiser. I don't have time for all these questions, he muttered, and his door remained closed. One day he heard a tapping at his window. A big black bird flew into his house. It was the king's crow with a note around its neck. Dear Wise Wolf, I am very ill. Only you can make me better. Please help. Yours, the king. No time, shouted Little Wise Wolf. There's a plant I need to research and a big book to finish reading. And I think I've just found a new star. I'm really rather busy right now. When the king calls, you have to come, said the crow. Little Wise Wolf thought long and hard, as he liked to do. Then he packed everything he needed. And the next morning he set off. Little wise wolf, said the mouse, where are you going? I'm off to see the king. I don't have time for all these questions, he growled, and he cycled away. I've heard that the king is ill, said the badger, and only the wolf can make him better. Hmm, said the bear, but it's such a long way to the castle. Do you think he needs our help? The road was very long. Little wise wolf pedalled and pedalled and pedalled. The road went up and the road went down. Little Wise Wolf walked and walked and walked. The mountains became higher and higher. Little Wise Wolf climbed and climbed and climbed. Oh, he's going so slowly, whispered the goat. Do you think he needs our help? Well, we're really rather busy right now, said the rabbits. Around midday it started to rain. Big drops fell from the sky. That little wolf is getting soaked, said the frog. Do you think he needs our help? Evening fell and it grew dark. Little wise wolf was tired of walking. I'm cold, my stomach's rumbling, my feet hurt and I'm lost. Maybe I'm not as wise as everyone says. I think someone else will have to make the king better. But then in the distance he saw a light. And there, deep in the forest, Little Wise Wolf found a tent with a campfire and a pan of soup. He had no idea where they came from, but he had a lovely night's sleep. Wake up, Little Wise Wolf, shouted the bear the next morning. You have to go and see the king. Little Wise Wolf was very surprised. Did you all come here to help me? he asked. Of course we did, cried the animals. They took him to the edge of the forest. But 
Are you coming with me? asked Little Wise Wolf. Nope, you can do it alone from here, said the bear. But the city was big and Little Wise Wolf was soon completely lost again. Can anyone tell me how to get to the castle? he asked quietly and a friendly cat showed him the way. Finally, Little Wise Wolf arrived at the castle gates, but then he couldn't go any further. I don't think I can do it. Someone else will have to make the king better, he said once again. But the crow pushed him inside. Go on, the king is waiting for you. Hello, Wise Wolf, said the king weakly. Thank you for coming. I'm not as wise as everyone says, stuttered the little wolf, but the king wouldn't listen. Make me better right away, he said. I don't have time to be ill. So little wise wolf made some medicine from a herb that only he knew, because it was in a book that only he had read. The king swallowed a spoonful, and before long he was back on his feet again. Please, begged the king, stay here and be my royal doctor. I'll give you a tower room so you can look at the stars. No one will disturb you. You can read big books all day. But for once, the little wise wolf did not have to think long and hard. I need to go back to my friends on the other side of the mountains, he said. I still have a lot to learn from them. Since then, little wise wolf is never too busy when the other animals come to see him. No one knows how but he manages to read just as many big books as before and he discovers just as many plants and stars but this time with his friend's help. The end. Oh, well done little wise wolf, he learns an important lesson I think there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the story and this is Mr Mason signing off for tonight's South Hill bedtime story. Good night everyone. <laughs>